Hey, I'm the Gamer. Welcome back to FM23 Newton Heath, Episode 7. We continue on with our journey to survive Season Number 1 before we get the large stadium in place. And, of course, you know, broken record as it is. Uh, try not to repeat myself on it so much here, but uh, that evolution of the squad continues with four new faces over the last couple of matches. Uh, a couple of them getting squared away today and once again we have ourselves with the uh, yellow jersey yellow jersey for both teams so yeah there's that happening uh, it is definitely bugging out on the jerseys but Guthrie steps up to make a big save there that's a close range shot uh, sure goal it could have been better placed in the corner but sure goal from where it was but anyway as we play this one out, which I, I don't think I'll be staying in this match too long here with the uh, Jersey confusion, as I thought we were through there for a second, but that was the defender. Very confusing here. But anyway, uh, the new faces. Owen oh, Gamble, right back. Four star. Oh, deflection and Eastman. Second guy is in. Center attacking mid. Gamble and Eastman each played in the last match. Which was a draw on the road, by the way. 2 2. Big deflection from the defense there to help us out on that one. Uh, but yeah. So Eastman in the attacking mid role. Gamble at that right fullback role. And then two new defensive mids Bale and Burton. Bale and Burton both upgrades there uh, to give us something pretty solid now. The one very weak position that still remains is Guthrie in goalkeeper. Finding a new goalkeeper has been a real, real challenge. I have three players right now who are on loan at the club, and it looks like two or possibly all three of them are going to be an upgrade, which actually could essentially mean that, you know, I would take all three of them, hang on to Guthrie for just a little bit, letting the other two guys go. Uh, making sure that they actually do work out and are better as George. Oh. Now, arguably, that was maybe an offside type situation, but I have no idea. It wasn't necessarily in the camera view uh, as Bale. Nice recovery there. Gets it to the edge of the box, but he pulls it way back deep to Midgley, who's already on a yellow card. Uh, Midgley is the next upgrade necessary. So, like I said, you know, besides goalkeeper, uh, where we have three goalkeepers that are currently on loan that we're trying to sort out. I brought in 10 new left backs. And from those 10, uh, nice recovery from Midgley there, but unfortunately uh, they keep it in and Guthrie just fucking stands there, watches the ball go right over his shoulder. That was an easy save. Absolute nightmare from Guthrie. It's like he thought it was gonna go over the bar and out. I mean, look at this. Close range, and he's just like, Whee! I'm doing the wave! Yay! Barely even moved his arms. Certainly didn't move his feet. Certainly didn't jump for it. And the ball was, like, straight to him. Wow. That, that's not what we needed. That is really not what we needed. We've been in control of this match. We've been playing so well. It goes close. Their keeper. The ball was over his head, but he dives and stretches and reaches and makes a save. You know, if Guthrie even gives a 2% effort instead of the 1% effort in the wave, then it's still 1-0, and we're still in total control, and that's going to be a yellow card for Wilson. Sure enough, it is. Obvious yellow card there. His rating sucks right now. He is struggling in this one. Uh, we're still largely in control of this game, but yeah, that was, that was rough. That was just a terrible, silly, silly play from Guthrie. From those 10 left backs that we were looking at, I think I still have about five uh, still with the team at this point as we've, you know, canceled about half of those knowing that they weren't good enough, but it does look like we are going to find an upgrade to Midgley within the next week or two. Real hit and miss on who's doing well and who isn't. Uh, 
and ultimately, you know, those individual performances are what they are with us. I mean, you know, mistakes are, are, are bound to happen with the quality of players that we have. And a uh, big difference from FM22 to FM23 is George, George, yes! Back in the lead, eight minutes into the second half, and George gets on board, Ebanks. Ebanks makes a, an excellent ball over the top. George outrunning the defense, and that's one of the things that I've looked for in some of the players, as you know, as I have choices. Speed was one of those things, I'm trying to get a, a quick team together so that they at least have that over opposition, and then you know, kind of add quality along the way. But two to one should should be two nothing. Are you kidding me? We're we're gonna get a, a silly penalty. Again, boy, is that our team or what? Guthrie stands pat, waits, waits for the team to, waits for the guy to step up and take the shot, patient, and they're going to get it a moment later anyway, off the corner kick, but Guthrie just waited, it was kicked straight at him, but, you know, usually a guy's going to dive out of the way, free header, bodies everywhere, hard to tell which ones are which. I think we had at least one defender there, but that was about it. Uh, and, yeah. But if we can come away with a point, we can come away with a point, and that would be something pretty special. Bale, this ball inside, but uh, they're going to go the other way. Archer, oh, great ball through to Walton. Fortunately, we do get a little recovery, and apparently we've got a foot in. Didn't look like it. Dangerous situation for us here. We can get this away. Uh, instructions are to take a point. <laughs> instructions are very much to take a point. So play for those set pieces and the time wasting. Uh, Wilson, you are very, very tired and on a yellow. Let's bring on Sam's and let's use up those three subs here in the last couple of minutes, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time to, to help kill time. Uh, timing wise, the game was, you know, at 60 minutes and all of a sudden it's at 89. So there, there wasn't much of a time for us. Burton. Nice. That was offside. The, the initial guy was offside. Comes in from behind the man and sticks a foot in. Look, he's offside. There he is. He's offside. He's offside. He's still offside. Archer was offside the whole damn time. Motherfucker. Sorry. That is so ridiculous. So ridiculous. That was offside. Clear as day. Clear as day. It, you know, he's only a couple steps offside, but it couldn't be clearer that he is offside. I mean, so obvious. That's it. It's over. Guthrie's mistake is what really cost us on that one. Uh, absolutely nothing after the goal that we got. So, I mean, we, we just went absent from that game. And that's, that's the thing. Putting together a 90-minute performance has been the struggle. We should have won, first off. I mean... That, that should have been three points today. But we easily should have had a point today. Uh, Guthrie, just absurd goalkeeping. Very much, without a doubt, offside on the last goal. I mean, that, that was a no doubt about it. Even on the replay. I saw it live. Saw it on the replay. I had... My eyes were right that time. I All the time. I'm like... Was he? Was he offside? Replay? Okay, okay, my bad, right? No, no, that was offside. The, the guy was clearly off his back shoulder by two steps. And nobody was playing him on, right? And then he retreats from that position as if he's a center back, right? Coming into it and heads that to a teammate. As in, from the back line, retreating, coming forward in his case, right? Stepping up to the ball from behind the man. Couldn't have been clearer. Was not on side at any stage in that buildup. At any stage. Until he literally headed the ball. Uh, when he jumped, he was still offside. That's two goals, right? One, clear mistake from Guthrie. Two, offsides. Should have been a 2-1 win. Now, in terms of the play, well, okay, there's some XG that favors them. Uh looking at you know the that first and third goal not much not much xg came from those but 
eight tenths, right? It's an automatic. Eight tenths of XG came from that penalty spot. So they only had 0.63 for the entire game otherwise. It wasn't like they did much with the shots they had, which was, yes, more than us. But we had better XG than them, excluding the penalty. Now, the mess of bodies, you know, we have no idea if that was a penalty or not. But Guthrie stood pat, made the save. It was a bad attempt from the striker. Uh, but goalkeepers guess. They dive, and some people confidently just kick it right down the middle because, A, you're not going to miss the target that way, and B, goalkeepers, majority of the time, just dive out of the way. Guthrie just stood there, and they kicked it straight off of him, and he quickly dove on the ball before he got a second chance. So on that occasion, Guthrie made a good play. He ends up with a good rating despite giving up three goals. Despite giving up you know, an absolute howler on the first one. Just a, a nightmare uh, play from him that should see a much, much lower rating. <sighs> but penalty saves will do that for your rating, especially when they've evolved goalkeeper ratings. Uh, Premier League world-class keepers were the only ones who could ever get ratings above seven Yeah, a couple years ago. Absurdly disappointing. Should have had three points. At the very least, should have had one. Uh, coming out of this thing with no points is sad. But here's the good news. The team's getting better and better and better all the time. Not just with the AI managing, where they are managing to get points, right? We just had a 2-2 game on the road against a similar team near the bottom of the league. This was the bottom team in the league, though. So us being competitive against them was only, you know, hey, hey back end competitive but we were on the road so again with the good signs positive signs teams getting better and better and better week by week by week more so from just bringing in personnel that are better and with that we have hit rock bottom southport's win carries them from 8 to 11 points on the season and of course our minus 15 goal differential remains the worst but it's better than it was. I mean, we were at a minus 13 after five or six matches. Now, over the last five to six matches, it's only a minus two. Uh, a lot of good signs. We are a single win out of 15th, if you exclude the goal differential. And we're two wins out of a promotion playoff spot. The league's fairly tight. It's only 11 matches played. But we are already showing the signs of, hey, we're, we're eking out points and probably at just about enough of a clip to, to, to hang in there and be in the fight. And as the you know, roster improves, we will, the rate of scoring points will get better and better. You know, we're going from getting totally blown out in two out of three games and then just about hanging in there in one out of three to being competitive in two out of three and just losing and then actually getting a result in one out of three and that that's a you know huge step forward our next opponent in the fa cup third qualifying round we are going to be on the road so that's a factor but they're in the northern premier league bamber bridge that's i believe two tiers below us two and what's the expectation of the board and the supporters a draw that's where they see us right now is a team that is two tiers uh, below this level. I don't think we're quite that low. I think the, the group we have is maybe still one tier below our level and edging closer to our tier. I think a while ago we were looking at a lot of players that were average for that tier below. I think now we're looking at the better end players for the tier below, as in, you know, good enough to star. Not quite good enough to play at our level. Almost there, not quite kind of situation. Uh, so I think we should still be the favorite here, but we are going to be on the road. On the finances side of things, another profitable month, 65000 We had a lot of games. I don't know exactly how many home games we had. I guess I can check that here in just a second. But that overall balance is slowly getting up there uh, to a quality state. Uh, you know, with the income just high enough to, to offset that expenditure side. Uh, and at some stage here, we will probably make the first upgrade to the training facilities. 
uh, as almost all of these amateur players that have signed with us have, well, not all, uh, I'd say a quarter of the players that have signed a, with us have signed with multiple promises to improve the midfield or to improve goalkeeper uh, positionally. But roughly a quarter have come in with the promise to improve training facilities. I think that's, that's one of the first things we'll need to take care of, even though there's so much so much to do. I mean, we're, we're literally at the base level for everything outside of that stadium. Just for comparison's sake, I know it's a little bit behind the face cam here, but right at the bottom of the table uh, for the U18s league is the Newton Heath under-18s last place with a single point so far. One draw from eight matches played, seven losses, a minus 13 goal differential, which is not the worst. Geisley has a minus 20, uh, but it is second worst on goal differential, and it is last place in the league. So, of course, our youth rating, uh, we have no U18 players right now. It's all the grayed-out players, so it's it's not a good group. That's another area that, uh, long-term, we are absolutely going to need to invest a lot in uh, and I don't know, especially if we start climbing at a rapid pace, uh, it could be a long time before we see some players come out of the youth system into the senior squad if we are going to be uh, moving up quickly, and especially from this starting point. And the match is underway with one more new face who was just on the ball a second ago, Patty Lacey. Another defensive mid, so that's a, a whole new trio of guys that had been that weakest position. Goalkeeper-wise and left-back-wise, we are making progress. None of those guys have signed on yet, but they're there. Uh, they're, they'll be coming in, hopefully, by the next match. So, let's see what we can do today. Uh, said, oh, yeah, George gets on the board first. 13th minute here. Uh, it's a nice one. It's a good start. Lacey, great interception on that one. Plays it off for Bale, though. He probably could have had Harrison, but we get it to Harrison a moment later. God, I'd arguably should have been able to palm that one away out for a quarter kick. Eastman finds Harrison, switches play to Ebanks on that low cross through the box, but the shot is blocked. So far, it's just about all us they have had one attempt with uh, very little xg as a result we're actually ahead of the fouls department for uh, a rare while we are always always struggling there things have slowed down a little bit and here is a chance sinclair makes a nice cut to the inside he's going to get another chance here he beats us for speed and we'll block that one from sinclair smith sinclair smith now that's an interesting combination now, of course, I'm sure that probably is a real person, but uh, my hometown team, women's professional team, the Portland Thorns, who just won the NWSL championship uh, a couple weeks ago. This is our season as Ebanks makes it to just before half here. Uh, Sophia Smith, 20-year-old player out of Stanford, uh, U.S. women's national team star already, and this year's NWSL MVP and also the MVP of the championship game uh, and then Christine Sinclair the all-time leading goal scorer in international competition in the women's game uh, is it both both men's and women's well definitely in the women's Christine Sinclair Canadian player but also Portland Thorns uh, captain is she the captain or vice captain Anyway, uh, has been with the team since the foundation of the league uh, a decade ago. And that was our third championship, by the way. So Sinclair and Smith, both forwards. So interesting to see a forward on the other team. Just coincidence on that one. Okay, well, with a 2-0 lead in a game that we are only slightly edging, we're going to go ahead and go balanced for the second half, try to control things, make sure... We are staying behind the ball just a little bit better. Gamble has a yellow. Lacey has a yellow. Uh, nobody has terrible ratings. The defense, though, are kind of just so-so, which that's normal for our team. Our defense is definitely not great. We're not great at stopping individually. 
uh, tactically as we go forward, things kind of work out. And we're able to make some plays, and even against better teams in our own league, you know, we're able to get goals here and there. It's just the bleeding goals out of the defense that is still a bit of a problem, and that's really just down to individuals not uh, not capable of stopping the other team. Second half underway, and that long ball over the top. There's that part about having some speed as we get back on that one and get to the ball first. Lacey sets up Harrison. Oh, the keeper just gets a piece of that. George taken down in the box. Could have been a penalty easily. And then that's given as a penalty. You've got to be kidding me. This is some just dodgy refereeing. We get clearly wiped out in the box. That's not interested there. We simply step up and head the ball away. And it was straightforward, run of the ball, everyday header. Nothing unusual about it. Now, you know, FM is absolutely terrible about showing things like holes. Uh, you know, they're, they're never properly displayed in this game. Fouls just don't show up properly. But in one that couldn't have been clearer, versus one that looked very average, very normal. Good recovery there. Offside flag given. I actually thought he was on. I thought he timed that well. Uh, bad call? I don't know. But, yeah. To, to have a, a penalty on that occasion, just... Especially after I played just before it at the other end. It's like, come on. See, I got used to this last year. Uh, if you watched the FM Youth Factory from last season, you were in Norway, where the standards of refereeing is considered low by FM into the coding. And into the coding, the way that the game works and functions is you have uh, an evaluation of referees at the end of the year, and you're going to see either an increase or decrease in their evaluation. And every single season throughout the playthrough which was nearly 30 years that we covered uh, throughout the playthrough three players every uh, sorry three referees every single season had their rating decreased every year so the standards got worse and worse and worse as we went through ebanks oh it's deflected george pounces on it and somebody gets a foot in legally and blocks his attempt and it ends up banging off the bar wow so close to sealing this game up that's gonna be a second yellow it is he's gonna get sent off here uh, let's go ahead and use those subs that we have uh, let's get Lacey out of there we've got a decent backup in Burton now Ooh, that was a little close Gamble is uh, quite tired so let's go ahead and get on some fresh legs in Nicholson and it is stoppage time. Let's take a second to uh, set up the stalling. I mean, we've been so comfortable in this game, and yet it's a one-goal game. It should be 3-0. Or at the very least, 3-1, right? If ours was a penalty, for sure, the one before that was a penalty. As he... The ball went the same direction, so there was absolutely no play on the ball. One more sub to use. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, let's go ahead and get Eastman out of there. And we can bring on Sams. And then we can throw Sams back into the defense in a second. Oh, Ebanks. What you doing? Oh, Wilson. These guys want to give it away. Nicholson, nice interception. Bale. Needs to play that long ball to the corner so everybody can chase it down. Yates, what are you doing? Well, what's Guthrie doing? That's Guthrie's ball. He's, a, he's in a sweeper position. Wilson intercepts. There's it. Gates heads that away. Time's up. Time was up a minute ago. I don't know what sort of stoppage happened in the last four minutes to uh, amount to an entire extra minute, but there you go. I mean, we weren't even time-wasting until two minutes ago, so it wasn't on us. But anyway, fewer shot attempts, ultimately. XG, well, 
XG was, you know, most of their XG came from the penalty. When uh, it should have been the other way around. That was all they got, though. Uh, we do come away with the result, and we move on to, uh, I think, the final qualifying round before you get to the first round proper. I think it's four. It's been a couple years since I've played in England. So I've signed three new goalkeepers. The latest one just came to us by chance, and we finally have some serious progress. Guthrie, a longtime starter, full season starter here in the blue. His distribution is okay, but you can see he's, you know, his shot stopping is only an eight out of 20. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, in the green, Clayton, the new man, and all three players are better than Guthrie, by the way. Uh, I've already released. The other two, I'm going to hang on to Guthrie until we've seen Clayton and make sure he's not a huge bust. But uh, you can see his shot stopping and aerial ability is so much better. Where communication and mentally he's about the same distribution is very similar, physically very similar, uh, and much quicker. So to sweep, uh, that speed can absolutely play a role if you're charging off your line to you know pick up a, a, a long ball over the top of the back line. So yeah. Uh, really solid upgrade. I mean, we're looking at plus four to shot stopping on a plus three to aerial. And, and for a goalkeeper, those are the first two things. Those are absolutely the first two things. Can you actually stop a shot? Can you keep the ball out of the net? And then, and, you know, and that involves those two things. The shot stopping itself, essentially all low balls, and then aerially to get all the high balls. And combined with the shot stopping for that one, really. Uh, and then speed for sweeping. So the mental communication and distribution parts are secondary. And he's about the same as Guthrie in those areas. So uh, big step forward. Big step forward. And uh, I mean, Guthrie's given up better than two goals per match. Uh, so hopefully Clayton can bring that down, even if he only brings it down to 1.8. <laughs> For us, uh, you know that 0 0.3, 0 0.4 goals per match less. Imagine what that's going to do for our points tally as the season goes on. And this is this is the story, kind of up and down the roster as we've had this revolving door. Now gains in other areas are more marginal. Midgley has been our left back for a while. Our upgrade Akinwe is only a little bit better. He's a little more physical. He's got better vision and better technically, attacking-wise, is very similar. Slightly better aerially, identical defending, and actually is not quite as good mentally or in the speed department. So uh, we're talking about you know marginal at best uh, for the gains here. Now another way to look at it is the other guy we brought in, which is Corrigan. Ryan Corrigan, meanwhile, is much better mentally very similar in a lot of ways, but also just slightly worse in a few. In the head head for Corrigan versus Midgley, you can see how Corrigan, a similar mold. Uh, attacking wise, he's one point worse. He's a little bit slower, but just slightly better than Midgley at a lot. So uh, the big thing that we've managed to do so far is all those guys that were definitely worse than Midgley on the roster, we had a few of them, are, are redundant now. And so uh, we've at least brought that level up a bit, but we haven't necessarily gotten much better than what Midgley offers. And Midgley, 11 starts and one appearance off the bench, has four yellows uh, at a 6.6 .6 average rating. He did pick up a man of the match once, but uh, there's that. So uh, it's been a bit of a weakness for us. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily improved strongly at, at this stage. But all these new faces, I mean, all of them, uh, Wilton Green to Bradbury, everyone from Green up has been new over the last month. And then the bottom end of the roster are the guys that we started the season with, not even preseason. Like these are the guys that showed up a match or two or three matches in, and now almost all of them have been replaced in the lineup. So 
progress. Progress being made. I'm going to go ahead and push forward a couple more matches, and we'll see if we can score any points in those with this new group. And then at the same time, I think it's also time that I make another dent in... Uh, I think it's time we make another dent on the free agent market looking for our next position adam yates at center back might be the weakest guy so kind of makes sense as we've gone positionally uh, rotating through getting things that that would be the next one that needs further upgrading because even wilson who at the time was big time he was like the best player the day we brought him well, no, i don't think he was uh Sam's actually, Sam's is supposed to be better than Yates, but he's not really. Two draws and a loss on the surface looks fantastic. Here's what actually happened, though. So Curzon, Ashton, a penalty helping us out, and a almost last-minute goal to equalize. Uh, saved, saved the point for us on that day. So we came away with a point at home. And then it was FA Cup fourth qualifying round against Oldham who are in our league halfway up the league they got a penalty early but we equalized before the end we were playing at home for that one full 12,000 in attendance but then for the replay that just happened yeah it didn't go well uh, they were up five nothing inside half an hour they had two goals in the first three minutes they were up three within the first 10 minutes it was ugly and Harrison's consolation goal in the 90th minute just took the skunk away but it was still pretty stinky but that does mean we are out of the FA Cup so we're not going to get that boost to morale uh, the rest of the season we're going to have to start relying on getting some results but if you look at recent form two wins three wins three draws and just two losses over the last handful but three of those four of those were fa cup matches so again there's that boost the league form though not looking too bad either i mean there's a win there's a couple draws and a loss that's pretty okay that is pretty okay uh, the loss that we had was unlucky too that was the one we played live at the beginning of this episode that should have been a 2-1 win uh or a 2-2 draw at the least. So we are getting competitive. For the first time, we saw expectations that included a draw, which we got that draw in those expectations. Uh, the team is inching its way towards being in a competitive state. Now, in terms of you know the standings, okay, fine. We're still last place. And now things are stretching out a little bit further than before, where a one match ago which by the way because of that replay we didn't get a match a midweek match in like we should have and it's going to be in a couple weeks so that's a factor okay we are a game in pocket compared to almost everybody else but where we needed six points two wins to get to seventh <laughs> yeah we're 10 points shy of that right now uh, where we needed one draw or one win to get to mid table now we need the two wins to get to mid-table. So a lot of teams grab some important points in that one. And we are quite a bit further back than we were. Even though we picked up a draw, we're further back than we were. So it's, uh, you know, one win right now is only enough to... Uh, actually, that wouldn't even get us out. That would equalize with Banbury, and that's who we play. That's, that's the match that got postponed. Uh, wouldn't even get us out of the relegation zone so the task looking a little harder but we don't have the fa cup in our way anymore we actually did well we were competitive they, they just wanted us to be competitive they, they weren't even looking for us to get through any key rounds uh, so good evaluation there fa trophy still coming up in just over a month but <sighs> difficult task uh, on that whole avoid relegation thing but like i've said our revolving door is making us better and better and better we are seeing the team being more and more competitive on a regular basis when i manage the team's not doing particularly well which is 
so unusual from where I'm normally at on this game, but uh, the AI seems to be doing just about enough to help keep us afloat. And, you know, with that revolving door, a brand new goalkeeper is going to make that huge difference. Uh, but, you know, you keep upgrading positions and roll uphill little by little, I think we can still just about get enough points. I, I'm feeling confident that there is hope. Uh, we're a quarter of the way into the season, so there's still plenty of time. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.